So that's what a delta is. Now, one thing that all rivers have in common, and it's probably sort of a duh thing, uh, water flows downhill. Downhill! Isn't there a song called Downhill? I just watched downhill skiing on the Olympics last night. Um, downhill. There you go. All right. Now, drainage basin. This is what I started the podcast with. What the heck is a drainage basin? A drainage basin is the area from which all of the rain that falls eventually flows to the same final destination. So the drainage basin of essentially the Mississippi River is the Gulf of Mexico. All right. So this is the drainage system for um, the Mississippi River. Here we've got some major rivers that have feed this. The Red River, the Arkansas River, all right, the Platte River, which is kind of part of the Missouri River, the Cheyenne River, the Yellowstone River, the Iowa, the Des Moines, the Illinois, and the Ohio River, and the Tennessee River. They all flow right through here. Now, an interesting thing, we have something called the Continental Divide. The Continental Divide, that means if, if water falls on the, on the right side or the, or the east side on, uh, of the Continental Divide, the water will flow, eventually reaching the Atlantic Ocean or the Gulf of Mexico in most cases. If it falls on the other side of the Continental Divide, so if you're standing on the Continental Divide and one drop will make it to the Gulf of Mexico, the other drop of water will flow essentially into the Pacific down here like through the Colorado drainage basin, the Colorado River. The interesting thing about where we live, of course, is we live very close to the Continental Divide. It's just up over by Breckenridge. It's not terribly difficult to get there, an hour and a half or so, by car, not even that far, probably an hour. And uh, so if you um, drop some water on one side, it will send water over here. And if you drop water on the other, it goes in the other direction. Cool. Now, an interesting thing I want to talk about here is about the Mississippi River Basin. Is if we look at sort of the big, the big areas, the, the basins that they call them, there's the Missouri Basin, the Upper Mississippi, the Ohio, the Tennessee, the Lower Mississippi, and the Arkansas Red-White Basin. But it's very interesting for Colorado, or at least for us in Woodland Park, we actually live right on the line between the Arkansas and the Missouri. Literally, we live on the line right there. And that leads to a very interesting thing that I want to talk about. All right, this thing is called the drainage divide, which is also called a watershed. This is the line that separates a neighboring drainage basin. They are also called catchments. In hilly country, the divide longs along a topographical peak. All right, topographical peak. There's peaks around where we live, aren't there? And ridges. But in flat country, the divide may be invisible, just a more or less notational line on the ground on either side of which falling raindrops will start a journey to different rivers and even to different sides of a region or a continent. So the continental divide that I talked about earlier is a drainage divide. So is where we live. We live on the drainage divide, go back to that map, between the Arkansas drainage basin and the Missouri drainage basin. Technically we talked about the South Platte, the South Platte hooks up this is the North Platte right here, and I think they call it the Platte River here, okay? So let's do a quick little video clip. Let me take you to the drainage divide that is not very far from where I am sitting right here at Woodland Park High School. So let's go there now. All right, I'm standing in a very interesting place in Woodland Park, Colorado. If you're not from Woodland Park, we're sitting in the mountains of Colorado. We're, of course, at the headwaters of, uh, of several river, of, of two main river systems. All right, and this interesting spot where I'm exactly standing is if water were to fall behind me, just to go, just with the crest of that hill right behind us, the water would eventually go through the Arkansas River. It goes to Fountain Creek. Fountain Creek eventually meets Arkansas River. Arkansas River actually goes to the Mississippi. So a huge, huge river system. We're at the headwaters of that. But if you turn around, as we're turning around now. If a water were to drop like right here behind me where I'm standing now, that water flows downhill. We're at the headwaters of the Platte River system. And the Platte River, it flows downhill, downhill. It goes through Denver to South Platte, out to Nebraska, eventually to, to the uh, Missouri River, which eventually goes to the Mississippi. So actually, interesting thing is the water actually goes to both places, eventually to the Mississippi River and out at the uh, Mississippi River system, the Delta in Louisiana. But uh, this is a huge break point between two huge river systems. Now this one here that goes to the Platte River, and this one up here that goes to the Arkansas River. Of course, one thing cool to see there, of course, is we've got Pikes Peak in the background, and that feeds the whole Arkansas River system. All right. 
So you hopefully have discovered um, that we are very close to that Arkansas and Missouri River. I think in the video clip I talked about it being on the South Platte. The South Platte feeds the Missouri River system, so we are right there on that line. So that's pretty cool. All right. Rivers are used for many things. So sort of a last thing in this podcast and last thing on rivers. Let's talk about how rivers are used. They're used for many different things. They're used for domestic and industrial use. You, um, you drink some water. Um, uh, factories use them industrially. Um, you use them to uh, uh, flush your uh, uh, your stuff down the drain, right? Yeah. Uh, we use rivers, sadly, for waste disposal. Sometimes that's not a good choice. Actually, usually not a good choice. We need to treat our water before we do that, but sometimes that's not done. It's used for transportation, all right? We have lots of transportation options. Electrical power generation, uh, hydroelectric power I'm talking about, and recreation. And there's other things, but this is a pretty good list. And I want to just show little video clips of each of these and talk about them one at a time. Or actually, I'll have some experts talk about them.